Carved into the great statue are inscriptions of gratitude. They reveal the secret order of this temple. First the back, then the rear, then the back of the right hand, and finally the back of the left hand. So let's see, back, rear, right, left. Back, rear, back, rear. Those are the same thing. So if we go down here, on the back of the hand, you can see right. So back, rear, right, left. So we're not going to go in these in any specific order. We're just going to see what they look like. Oh, and uh, hey everybody, welcome back to another Pal Play Scoured Sword. There's the other one. Pal Play Scoured Sword. Oh, and there's the other one. In the last episode, we got a small key after entering the ancient sister, the water temple of this game, and we are going to head through that door right now. Go ahead and jump up here. Jump up here. So, uh, if you notice that my rupee count is inconsistent with last episode, that's because I actually redid this episode. Uh, yeah, redid this episode. So, no. I played through the events of last episode again because I didn't save. So, that's why it's inconsist inconsistent. So, let's go through this door. And see what's on the other side. I really have no complaints, I don't think, that I can think of about this dungeon. It's probably my favorite dungeon game. It just, you'll, you'll see it in this episode, but how ingenious this is, the, the design for this is just amazing. Master, I have taken the liberty to confirm th that a door is located that, at the uppermost section of this statue. The lock is unfamiliar to me. Thank you, Fee. So, there's nowhere else to go but down, and it looks like there's land down there so let's go ahead and jump we looked before we leapt and now we leapt leaped leapt and mini boss this target lock style master this is an elite captain of the undead soldiers. When provoked, it has the ability to strike with all four of its sword-wielding arms. I recommend inflicting, inflicting damage when the slight gap presents itself as it readies its swords to attack. Ow. So right off, it's going to act like a... It's going to act like a normal Sarkos. And be the pushover that normal Stalfos are, unless they're in a group, and then I get slaughtered. But when provoked, it will draw. That was stupid. It'll draw the other two swords. So basically, this is General Grievous from Star Wars. Except cooler. So it lost its helmet. Wait a minute, I don't hear you. Can we stab you there? We can! Oh my word, that just made my day. Oh my word. Secrets? That's amazing. You can just stab right through his his block when he tries to hit you. That's amazing. So that's mini boss. So I guess in here is the item of this dungeon, and it looks like it. No, it isn't the hook shot. It isn't the claw shot. But it's something that'll make us look like. Indiana Jones! We got the whip. Attached to the end of the whip is a strange glowing sphere of light that can latch onto various things. If you see something you can't reach, target it with, target it with Z and swing the Wii remote to snag it with your whip. Snap, son! So we have the magical whip. Sadly, there are no upgrades to this item, though it doesn't really need any. And say, as you can see, it's a whip. That'll make us look like Indiana Jones. So. Much like the, the kind of theme with, uh, oh, also, look at this. Whip. Oh, we can't target that, duh. 
Hello. Um, we can't leave this room unless we use the dungeon's item, so let's do that. Go ahead and whip that, and then pull it, and it will spin up much like the, uh, those switches in, uh, Majora's, Ma Majora's Mask, Majora's Mask's Great Bay Temple. In fact, this, this whole area kind of rings with Majora's Mask. So we can ride up the asparagus. There's nothing we can do up here yet, but I'm just gonna activate these and it'll just bring us to the very top, which we can't do anything here right now. In fact, let's read this. Look for the key that lies beneath the earth. Okay. Based on the patterns we have seen so far, I believe the key mentioned on the stone marker is the key required to unlock the device ahead of us. I kind of figured that fee. Thank you, though. Jump. Yes, I'm so glad we landed there. Are there any? Do we have to go down again? We do. Okay, let's jump. No, Link. Jump. Oh man. Okay, so let's go ahead and go up here. This dungeon just. Whoever, whoever made this dungeon at Nintendo, major props to you. This is an amazing area. It's complex, like all water temples are, though it's not overly complex. So the first place, like, first place we want to go is here. And we want to go up on these lily pads. Now, what we want to do is flip, the, flip this lily pad with the whip. And now we can access it. And from here, what we want to do is jump on there. Jump on there, work that, and flip it. We're going to cut off the water flow. And now we can enter that fish mouth. So yeah, this, this dungeon is very complex, though it isn't confusing like other water temples are. It's very well designed and everything has a reason. For example, behind this fish is a chest. Remember kids, behind all fish are chests. So if you see a fish, look behind it, there's going to be a chest with 20 rupees. So, skull tolls are actually a joke once you know how to do it. Just swing, finish it. And we can't get through here, but with the whip, we can do that, flip the switch, and we can get through. This, I have a question. Why is this here? What's with the canal? There are no secrets that I know of. Oh, I hear some friends that want us. I'll take care of you in a second, buddy. Whoa. Okay. This guy, uh, we want to lead him over here. Get off me. Get over here. Get over here. Come on. Over here. Don't go in the water. Don't go in the water. No. He was going to give me a bunch of stuff. Man. That was lame. I was hoping that he'd give us, like, a bajillion, uh, j jelly blobs, because he's, he's huge. He would have given us, like, a hundred. Maybe not a hundred. Maybe more like three. <laughs> so, um, let's see, I kind of want, hmm. I want, I believe I want to do this. The symbol for male, sort of. I believe that'll get us... Yeah, it will. Okay, it'll get us bombs. And now we have full bombs. Good. I believe we were empty before, so that's really nice. Ow. I want to kill these guys. No more? Okay. Okay, now we're going to be Indiana Jones. And we're going to whip this guy. Get back. Get back. Okay, we're gonna whip him to the edge and like a jerk, we're going to kill him this way. 
Bye. And then Indiana Jones our way over here. Da 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 da. Da da da. There's a picture of Indiana Jones had a sword. How cool would that be? Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Okay. So we want to go over here and drop down. And then we want to kill this guy. Okay, this puzzle ish sort of puzzle puzzle has confused me since I started playing the game. What I believe I used to do is target this and then target that lever there and then jump down and then while targeting it with it. But what you want to do is you want to swing onto it. I'm surprised I didn't get this till last take of this episode, but yeah. I, you just swing onto it, and there you go. And then, you actually want to go back up. This stumped me for so, several minutes. Swing back. And then... Jump. Avoid the wall tula, which I found out today they're called wall tulas. Kill him without even looking. For some reason, this wheel takes priority over targeting enemies, which I don't like. Because then, while you're trying to target an enemy, you keep targeting the wheel. And then you get hit. Speaking of which, what does he say about this? The head of this bulb-shaped bulb switch can be rotated, providing you have the correct tool. Okay. We're gonna do that. Rotate it, and it'll open a vacuum thing object. Now, we want to go off... Oh, if only we had... I wish we had a, dim, a diving board here, but... We just jump in here. And we get sucked down the toilet of fate! I don't really know if it's the toilet of fate. But it empties us out into the sewers, so I guess it was toilet. You can't go on any of these, because there they're are... Uh, Skulltulas. So what you want to do is jump up here, go ahead and grab your beetle, which is another way I really like how you use all your, well, most of your items in, in dungeons. You want to cut that one, because it'll flip the, it'll flip the lily pad, so you can get through. Now, we're going to leave that guy alone, because, um, that, that guy's name is Stu, and, um, he's actually a good guy. He actually makes really, really good chili, so we're going to leave Stu alone. Oh, and, um, you're probably going to be wondering if in any LPs, so say I did an LP of Pikmin, am I going to be using the, the very commonly used name for a certain red leaf Pikmin? Uh, his name starts with S, ends with an E, and you're, you're probably wondering if I'm going to be using that name. If, if I do an LP of Pikmin, um, I'm going to try not to. But, I don't know, what, if it slips out, I'm not going to, like, re-record the episode. And while that guy is taking aim at us, we're just going to stop and look out here. For whatever reason, that guy's not going to shoot us till after we've exited the cutscene. And seeing that there's a very creepy area here. Master, I have some important information that, that I'm certain you'll want to hear. There's a large treasure chest, and I just saw that. There's an 85% probability it contains the key that will open the door we observed at the top of the stone statue. Thank you, Fee. Now, this guy took all that time, like 20 seconds, to aim, only to miss. And also, for whatever reason, archers only take one hit. I don't know why that is, but it is. So, there's nothing here for us anymore, so we can go ahead and exit. This is really just a filler area that kind of introduced the fact that that place is creepy. And despite all the beauty of this dungeon, it's really not... It's really kind of an illusion. Okay, so this... Also, it, it's kind of funny. Did you catch that? When we went... When we went up here... Uh, our ripples, the ripples we make in the water, were actually floating in the air. Okay, so what we want to do... We actually don't want to go through there just yet. We want to go over here. And we want to jump up here. 
That's something I want to mention. Um, I mentioned Majora's Mask, and I kind of realized that I just I just realized that the um the water controls for this game are actually not unlike those for Zora Link in Majora's Mask. They're actually just like them, except slower, a little bit more sluggish. But they're pretty much the same. Okay, we're gonna kill him. Now what we wanna do is we wanna jump down here, fall on the lily pad, and it will open passage below. Now we wanna go down that passage. There is a red ruby which we wanna get. So we wanna avoid these, which I still have to buy out them. I don't know what they're called. Actually, you know what? You know what? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. I actually have Zelda Wiki open, and if my thing will load, I'm checking real quick. Okay, what are those called? Those are called Frokes. Okay, so they're called Frokes. I've decided that I'm kind of keeping Zelda Wiki open now when I do episodes, so that if there's anything I need to tell you, I can, because it's kind of cool. Oh, and, um, never mind, never mind. I was about to tell you something that we haven't come across yet. <laughs> we wh we rip whipped the ruby. So we, we trigger this, and then what that'll do is that'll push the lily pad up. Now this is really cool. This is where the design of this dungeon really becomes amazing. So what we want to do is we want to jump up here, run up here, Go climb back up here, and now that that lily pad is raised up, we want to flip it. Oh, and once you flip this, do not immediately jump. I've made that mistake many times before. Wait until it stops wobbling, or else you will fall down there, get caught up there, hit that, and fall back down. You won't get stuck forever, but you will get... It will be inconvenient. So just go ahead and do that, and we can continue on. Now, up here is the passageway. And actually, um, now that I think of it, we should probably go back down there real quick. I'm gonna cut back. Actually, no, I'm not, because it's really quick. Okay, uh, what I wanna do is I actually wanna open that up, because we didn't. Okay, so I wanna open this up. There. Okay, now we can. We, now we have access to here again. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut up. Okay, now, we won't kill these guys because they're bugging us. Well, they will. These guys are called Furnix. This is a Furnix. This spirit bird is said to survive by eating flames. Due to its cautious nature, it can be difficult to approach. However, by catching and holding the bird's attention, some are able to successfully attack it. I suggest being wary of its curled tail. You defeated zero of this type of... Okay. So, a phoenix, sort of. But eating flames is pretty cool. And it's basically like saying, okay, go out of your way, draw its attention, so you can kill it. And stab it through the chest, and it's out for the count. Now we want to go down here. If you have a, a space like this where you can go down, go ahead. Because it'll save you time and money. Not really money, but stamina. And drop. There's a chest here containing 20 rupees. And we're going to go ahead and take this opportunity to shoot the Waltulas down. And continue on. 
If, hopefully that you guys have noticed how well designed this area is. Go on, Link. We're gonna go ahead and take a respite right here. Respite? <laughs> Why'd I say that? I mean, it's an appropriate word for the what I'm doing, but just kind of a an older word. So we're gonna drop down. Link down. Link down. Link down. Thank you. Drop, and here we are. Now, what we want to do is first, we're going to grow an asparagus right here. And we're going to... Also, we're going to trigger this. And we're going to lower that room. And there we have it. We can now go below. Though the problem is, now we can't access that chest. So we'll figure out what to do. Okay. Let's go. Jump! So now that it's lowered, we're actually entering through a higher door than we did last time. Oh. And uh, the head, comically, the head is gone. We're entering through the mouth of the statue. So enter through the mouth and go out through the feet, which is okay. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, uh, let's go through that door next episode. I know it's a short episode, but we have a lot to do in there, and so we might as well end it here, or else I will be ending it in the middle of something, and you guys won't like that either. So if you like uh, next episode, we'll be going through that door and seeing what creepy things are available in there. See you guys next time for another Pal Plays Skyward Sword. Got the there we go. Wait. Oh wow. That is cool. Listen, I'll turn it up. It sounds like it's under water. Man, that's cool. That's really cool. I think that's super, super cool. Okay, see you guys next time.